You're watching the award-winning GHS TV, a nationally recognized student television station. Hello and welcome to a new edition of Shelby County Schools Report. We're coming to you from the studios of Germantown High School Television on the Germantown High School campus. I'm Sarah Mayers. And I'm Deborah Noel. Each month we highlight various people, programs, and events making a difference in our school system. This month's teacher feature spotlights Grandview Heights teacher Ken Green, who uses music to engage students in science, math, history, and English. Parents will want to stay tuned for today's SCS Focus. Executive Director Allison Long is joined by Shelby County Schools Optional Program Director Linda Sklar. They will discuss what opportunities are available to students enrolled in the programs. Our School of the Month is recent Blue Ribbon School Award winner Jackson Elementary. Later we'll hear from Tennessee's Principal of the Year and our Shelby County Schools calendar closes the show. Just spend a few minutes watching Ken Green teach and it becomes obvious that this is someone who loves what they do. I had a chance to visit the Grandview Heights Middle School Music and Media teacher and found out he is just as passionate about his students and their education. What we're going to do is, is go over the lesson that you guys had um, last Tuesday before we left for the break. Inside this classroom at Grandview Heights Middle School, it may not look like it, but musical magic is happening. Combining music and today's media, Teacher Ken Green has created a class you won't find anywhere else in Shelby County. Music and Media is a class I've developed over several years of working here in Shelby County Schools. It's uh, sort of a hybrid course combining uh, the best of general music in terms of composition, uh, performance, uh, a lot of the literacy pieces, uh, reading and writing music. We do drama exercises, we um, study rhythms and different patterns of music, we um, annotate forms, and we do kind of notations of music. It's really fun. This class gives students a hands-on experience. In today's technology, like this iPad, they're able to express their vocal and musical performances. We learned about the drum circle, how to put the beats in formation. We learned a lot about Africa too. The world drumming part of the class goes back to that first year as well. Uh, as I mentioned, we didn't have a, a lot of resources in the classroom at that time, and one of the first things I was able to get was a set of world drums. The drums are actually their desk, which is really cool because each child has a drum. Faculty members say since he's been at Greenview Heights, Ken Green has changed the way they view traditional learning. What I've learned from Ken Green is to uh, think out of the box and actually look to recraft the box. Class can take on a different definition when we redefine what we have students doing with our classroom. Does this poem tell you something about, about the content? I think he pushes the envelope as far as what we're supposed to teach the kids listed on the curriculum. Besides being creative, one of the main goals of the class is to apply lessons to other academic classes and vice versa. He redefines possibility. You know, a lot of students, you know, they find out music's on their schedule, like music. Oh, but this is not your typical music class. This is a music class that uh, involves everything from politics to uh, literature uh, in a realistic and relevant way uh, that, again, captures the interest and imaginations of, of students who would not love having that on your staff. And Green says he loves knowing that what he is doing will impact his students for the rest of their lives. I, I want them to realize uh, through the work we do here uh, that, that they have their own voice. 
first Shelby County Schools report, I'm Sarah Mayers. Each month in our Faces of SES segment, we highlight administrators who go that extra mile. And probably no one exemplifies that more than Middle College High School Principal Delcia Generet Walker. In October, she was named the 2016 Tennessee Principal of the Year. While her faculty and students always knew she was one of the best, for Principal Generet Walker, the recognition is still sinking in. When we found out that she'd become Principal of the Year, we were elated. It was exciting. There was a buzz around this building. The kids were excited. I think I got 200 emails that day. But we weren't really surprised because she is, like without bragging, she really is that good. She's so deserving and works so hard. It's, it's a special, special award for her. They know I hate to cry and I have never cried before, but today, oh my God, this is so amazing. She is so humble, I would say. Anytime she's congratulated for being principal of the year, she always puts it back on the things that we do and the things that the kids do. So what we have is a group of adults that are so committed to our children and our city that they do whatever it takes to make sure our students succeed. So she knows everybody. And a lot of principals can't remember the name of their kids. And she remembers all of us. She never has to ask, oh, what's your name again? I think every principal is still a teacher. And so not only am I a teacher to students, I'm also a teacher to adults. I do want to make sure that they're learning and engaged yes. in those yes. things. And so I still have that connection to classrooms. And I still try to get in there and, and teach and model whenever I can. The best thing that she does is she sees each student very holistically. You know, it's not just a test score, not just a number, but there's, there's everything about a student. We try to be as extremely inclusive. Of course we have some foundational systems and processes here about making sure that every student kind of gets attention in the interventions that they need. But we try to take ideas from everyone on what works best for our students. The way that things are run here, everything is very purposeful. Um, everything is data driven. There's a reason behind everything that we do. Our environment is very collaborative. We give each other feedback. Administration also gives feedback. And so we're always growing as adults so that we can also um, help the students to grow. Our staff is so closer and we're so more combined. That makes us more of a family than any other school. I have the opportunity to serve an amazing group of students. You know, I come here every day and I am just in awe of the things that our students are doing here. Of course, there's an accountability element to that. So I am accountable for everything that happens here, good and bad. She is the driving force behind everything. I would absolutely not consider teaching in any other environment than this one. Behind every great school is a great principal, and she's our great principal. Without her, there wouldn't be any middle college. Welcome to John P. Freeman Optional School, where we lead the quest for excellence. Come on in, let me show you around. It's a unique opportunity for a child to matriculate from first grade all the way through middle school gives us an opportunity as well to get to know the families and prepare that child for the next level of learning and transitions are made easier for them. I have a teacher who helps me do many things and she does many fun things and that's why John P. Freeman is so special to me. I spend a lot of time and energy planning lessons that are rigorous and making sure that I'm exposing them to information that creates this thirst where they want to think about their future careers and where they see themselves beyond just John P. Freeman. If you are looking for a place to get great education, to grow a family unit, uh, this is the place to be. You're watching the award-winning GHS TV, a nationally recognized student television station. Now, let's send things over to Allison Long for this month's SCS Focus. Thanks, Deborah and Sarah. Shelby County Schools works to develop the full potential in each child, along with strong academic standards. Here to discuss how optional schools benefit our students is Shelby County Schools Director of Optional Schools, Linda Sklar. Thank you for joining us. 
Thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here, Allison. Yeah. There are over 200 K through 12 you know, designated um, that way schools with Shelby County Schools, um, and students usually attend the school that they're zoned to attend based on where they live. Okay. Many people may not understand uh, anything about our optional schools program, and, mm -hmm. and I want you to reflect on that a bit and what is optional schools um, and, and what students are able to attend these schools. Okay. The optional schools program provide choice for parents. We have 47 innovative programs with a variety of entrance requirements, a variety of programs, a variety of interest, and just we want parents to know that you can go to the school of choice, whether it's your zone school by where you live or a school that you would like to transfer to because of a particular program or just about the choice program. We are mainly the one that's the optional schools program, which, with the, which has a specialty program. There's a theme base to every one of the 47 schools. And if you live in the district of the school, you get to attend the school, not necessarily be part of the optional school program, but you do attend the same school, or you get to attend the school because you want to be in the optional program, or you can transfer in from anywhere across our community into the program if you meet the entrance requirements. So there are some well-known programs like International Baccalaureate, College Prep, Creative or Performing Arts. Can you touch on some of those programs that are available for students? Sure. Well, we have College Prep program. We try to have programs all across the county so that children live wherever they, whatever area of town that you live in, you have an opportunity to attend a program in that area. So we have College Prep programs all across our community. Of course, with International Baccalaureate, it's harder to have them across our community. They're pretty expensive. They're wonderful programs, but the demands that are that are involved, it's a little harder. We have basically a K through 12 IB situation where kids can attend an elementary, middle, and a high school in the International Baccalaureate programs. We're probably one of the only ones in this area, which we're really proud of. We have STEM programs. We have elementary, middle, and high school programs that focus on science, technology, engineering, math. We have the creative performing arts programs, such as here, such as at Overton, Colonial, Roselle. We have environmental science programs throughout our community. We have Montessori programs. We have um, just, it's, it's, we got like a potpourri of schools throughout the district. Mm -hmm that offer people to special opportunities like international studies. We have programs where students learn about six different countries. Kindergarten you usually learn about the United States and then the next five years you focus on a different country. So when students leave an elementary program that's an international studies program, they learn the customs, the geography, the climate, the religions, language, everything about that country. And just think of if you had gone to an elementary school where you were exposed to that many different schools, how better prepared you would be mm -hmm. when you went to middle and high school. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, how do these students, I mean, how does it help in the long run? You, you mentioned learning all these things as an elementary student. Right. Of course, it opens um, their eyes to aspects beyond their neighborhood, uh, which they may be so used to looking into. But then how does it prepare students from middle high, going into high school and then high school to post-graduation years? Okay, well, one thing that we're really, really proud about is that all of the optional school students, their ACT meets college board standards across, and which is un, you know, basically unusual that all of them meet the college board benchmark standards for ACT. So we know that we're doing something right because the students are prepared. We know that when they move to a middle school and then a high school, if you compare our test score results with the locally, state, and national norms, we are above in every single area. So we know that we're preparing them for entrance into colleges, entrances into two-year programs, whatever, you know, industry certification. We, we have you know, programs like uh, aircraft. We work with the aircraft mechanics. We have a program connected there. We have our kids can graduate with a commercial, a, excuse me, a, a single pilot's commercial airline, uh, pilot certificate, mm -hmm. which is really amazing that the, how much that would cost a student, you know, to pay for that or a family, mm -hmm. but the district takes care of that. It's part of our career and technology optional program mm -hmm. connections. We have students that leave us, go into engineering schools, and they're in the top of their class. We have students that are asked to be all the special scholars across the country that come out of these high schools. As you know, we have students from here and from other schools that perform on Broadway, that win major productions as far as art and 
music and theater productions. Mm -hmm. okay. So we colleges, I guess the thing that's so exciting to me, Allison, is how colleges come to us and ask us to go to our schools. Mm -hmm. They don't just say, you know, we're only going to one school in Memphis. We, they say, we, we want to go to the optional schools, and they call our office. They make sure that they have the connections, if this, especially when there's a changeover of a counselor or something. We have that opportunity to give kids a better opportunity in the world. Mm -hmm. We also have t internships that our kids have an opportunity you know, to participate in in the summer. We have health sciences programs where kids come, they come to us and ask us where where can we find a student who really knows about this in this this philosophical area or this scientific area and then they go after the students and I'm talking about high school kids not just once they graduate. Mm -hmm. So if you are a parent who's watching right now or a student who's watching who is interested in learning more about programs that are offered across the county what what do they need to do? The most important thing right now is to come to the Optional Schools Fair, which will be at the University of Memphis on January the 8th from 1 to 4, because at that one place, a parent can learn about 47 schools, have representatives from 47 schools, have parents there, and sometimes we have an opportunity to have students there to answer questions about the individual programs. Then we have, oh gosh, I think it's like a hundred something open houses throughout the school district at the individual schools. And we always say, come to the Optional Schools Fair, learn about the different schools, see which one might be of interest, an area of town may be better for you, maybe closer to your work, so you can go have lunch with an elementary child, or a high school child. Mm -hmm. uh, but just to come learn about them there, and then I think the important part is to visit the school. I mean, I can't, people often call our office and I'll say, Linda, which school should, you know, which school would you pick? I said, well, my kids went to different schools because different schools meet the needs of different students. And I think when you walk in the building and have an opportunity to meet the people that are responsible for your children every day, you know what's right. right. There, there's not a perfect school for, for anyone, mm -hmm. but there is a way to, to determine what feels right, and often what feels right is the right place for you to put your child. So if you decide, okay, I like this program, and you really, on the application that, that you get to pick up, there are you can put more than one choice. Yes. Yes. So you're two not choices. married to one right away. No. Um, so once you the applications become available, I know there are different ways about going about picking them up depending on where you live. And but I, I think we need to probably mention that we see on the news Correct. when people go to the central office to pick up an application. Yes. Some people start lining up three days, five days beforehand, and yes. usually in inclement weather. And that, January. Yeah, <laughs> and in so January. Cold. It's not necessary. No. So please tell us what we need to do. Thank you <laughs> for, for asking me that question. Historically speaking, every student that applies on the first day and meets the qualifications, sometimes we don't share that part, but they meet the qualifications and the school has space. The important part is to always look and see if you're applying for, say, the third grade in the school. You need to make sure they have space before you make that choice. But Historically speaking, the only school that for many, many years has had a problem has been Idlewild's kindergarten program. Idlewild Elementary School, it's a great location. It's one of the few kindergarten programs we have, so it makes it extra popular. And so that's the one that every year it's much harder to get in. Um, again, the majority of the students get in, but not everyone gets in that program. As far as the others are concerned, you know, we give preference to students that are zoned to our Shelby County schools. So sometimes students that are not zoned to our Shelby County schools do, do not have an opportunity to attend because we have to serve the students first that are zoned to the Shelby County schools. Mm -hmm. There are some exceptions, as there are in Germantown, and we do have a, you know, a broader scale and a, a, um, a better radius where we can bring more children in uh, because during the merger. We, made we have special arrangements that, mm -hmm. that take care of that. So we haven't had a problem with our Germantown Elementary, Middle, or High School. The important part is that everyone applies the, uh, you know, in the beginning mm -hmm. and gives us an opportunity to evaluate the applications with the school, do the auditions, or interview, essay, and some don't even require that. You know, there's such a range of, of requirements. So sometimes people apply for a school and their students may not apply for one, but their second choice the student would apply for, you know, mm -hmm. would qualify for. And then we get, you know, we push to do that. 
And also when students don't meet the qualifications, say when they apply in January, we encourage them to bring up your grades or bring up your scores and reapply. And we always have spaces in the summer. People often say, you know, if you don't get in in January or February, you'll never get in. That's really not true at all. Mm -hmm. That's totally not true. Um, we take students all the way until school starts. Mm -hmm. And if it's not, um, if you haven't been part of an optional program from the ground floor, you're still oh, able yeah. to apply to get in. And as long as you have the prerequisites that are needed. That's right. You're and, and we love that because you love having new students come into our system. We try to keep all of the students we have, that parents have made an effort to make sure and students have, it's a choice. So you have, your population is, includes people who really care about where they are and want to be there. So it, it brings a special environment, you know, a very positive feeling about it. Well, your staff in the optional schools office is um, knowledgeable, helpful, friendly. So I know that they are ready, ready and waiting um, to help with anybody who has questions. Um, and I know there are a lot of questions about the, a new, um, if somebody's interested in, in this new school to attend or a new program to be a part of. Um, so I would venture to say you probably can reiterate to call your office or to oh, yeah. email. Please call us, please email us. We try to do within a 24 hour turnaround. If you're, someone's calling about a particular school, we try to hook them up with the right person and make that connection and then we follow up to make sure it happens. So and our schools are welcome, encourage people to come and to do tours. They just need someone to call, you know, and set up that appointment. Every school has an optional school contact. Mm -hmm. So if you call the school and someone wants, you know, a special thing or sometimes, you know, if children are coming from outside our district, we have different days off. So there may be a day off in a non-traditional Shelby County school, then they can come and shadow and they don't have to miss school, but they get to be with us. The only time we don't allow them to come is if we're testing. Mm -hmm. But other than that, we welcome, we welcome everyone to come in. Our thing is if you come in our doors, we'll find a way to keep you, <laughs> but we have to have a chance. Mm -hmm. So we encourage realtors, we encourage our parents, newcomers, anyone to give us a call. We do things on the weekend to meet with parents. You know, we, we're not a, a seven to, or an eight to five office. We're a whatever you need. We want you to feel that we care about you and we'll meet with you. We meet with people on the weekends. I mean, we're available and we just give us a chance. Well, you all work tirelessly and we appreciate the efforts um, that you um, do in order to make this a successful program and uh, I wish you the best of luck Thank to you. your staff and to the schools and the students that you work with. Thank you very much. Welcome to Germantown High School, an international baccalaureate creative and performing arts optional school, a destination school for students who are going places. Our students are of the highest caliber when it comes to their academics and knowledge. The IB program is a very rigorous program. You were challenged in a way that you thought you couldn't be challenged. You succeeded something that other kids may not have thought they could do. They're accepted to colleges that are just I mean, dream colleges for so many people. Germantown High School offers a CAPA program, the Creative and Performing Arts program. When I first came here, I saw the television studio and I was just amazed at what all I saw. Kids do everything, that they're taught every detail that has to do with theater arts and creative arts. I love a lot of things about Germantown High School, but primarily what I love is the athletics. There's something exciting around every single corner. We probably are one of the most diverse high schools in the state of Tennessee, maybe the United States. I would never doubt about sending your child to Germantown High School. This high school is something not like any other high school that we have. There's definitely fun in the work. We find fun in everything we do. You're watching the award-winning GHS TV a nationally recognized student television station. Everyone at Jackson Elementary has something to celebrate this school year. The school was recently named a National Blue Ribbon School. I visited the school to find out what makes the Jackson Bulldogs stand out from all the rest. Jackson Elementary is my heart. Spend a day at Jackson Elementary School and you'll understand why this rally school was named one of six Blue Ribbon Schools in Tennessee. We have the best parents, teachers, faculty. I was very excited, especially because I, um, I actually gave a speech that day about 
Jackson Elementary, and it was I was I felt very proud. It was a special opportunity for us because to see how much we've grown from all like other students to know that we were a part of Blue Ribbon. We received this award for closing the achievement gap, the teamwork that we've displayed over the years to make sure that our children are um, achieving and excelling at all levels. Um, just makes you feel good. Principal Yolanda Heidelberg has led JES for the past 16 years. And over that period of time, she has built a strong team of teachers who in turn build strong students. We all know each other. Most of us have worked a long time together. And so it's a very comfortable atmosphere here. She encourages us to take on um, leadership roles within the school and within the district, um, even outside of our regular teaching duties. Jackson Elementary has overcome many challenges, the most dramatic being a shift in demographics. Spanish-speaking students make up 73% of the student body, and that's twice the state average. I think that having a melting pot of students makes our school very special because we can all learn and extract from one another. We also have many activities and events that we do here at the school that promote the cultures of all of our students um, and their families. Bada, exactly, bada. To help bridge the language barrier, there are teachers who are either fluent or partially fluent in Spanish. Being someone for the students who they can actually relate to and talk to in their own language, um, and understand their experiences that they're facing here in this neighborhood. Um, I think it makes me more relatable. At JES, learning never stops. There is weekend homework, as well as summer, fall, and winter break work to get done. Even if they give us work on the weekend, um, I still do it because I think that's good because we can learn more. We tell the children that this is your job and, you know, you're here to learn, and I think that that's one of the things that made us so successful over the years. And according to teachers, this is all a part of the bigger picture. We are laying down a very strong foundation for our students uh, to be successful uh, community leaders. We hold our standards extremely high, um, and with that, I think that that's going to prepare them professionally to be able to thrive in environments outside of our school. For Shelby County Schools Report, I'm Deborah Noel. Now it's time to take a look at our Shelby County Schools calendar. Here's what's happening in the weeks ahead. Students are on winter break December 19th through January 2nd. Academic parent teacher team training continues the week of January 9th at nine schools across the county. The Board of Education will hold a work session Tuesday, January 24th, and the Board of Education will hold a business meeting Tuesday, January 31st. And for a look at the entire Shelby County Schools calendar, visit us on the web at www.sesk12.org. On behalf of everyone here at Germantown High School Television and Shelby County Schools, thank you for watching today's program. We'll see you next time on Shelby County Schools Report.